Uh, hello, Google Summit. Uh, my name is Shang Lin from NVIDIA. Uh, welcome to today's talk. Um, today, I will be sharing how NVIDIA achieves zero downtime failover for Cooper VMs with long-lived TCP connections. And we are using NVIDIA's GeForce Now as a case study. Um, yeah, so for today's agenda, we will, be, uh, we will start a talk by providing an overview of what NVIDIA GeForce Now is and its use of Kubernetes. Then, we'll be, then we will be talking about different types of VMs we, uh, we manage and what types of VM are we talking about for zero downtime failover, followed by the challenges to fail over such VM. And finally, we will present a technical solution to the problem and a walkthrough of our failover process. Um, okay. So to start off, let me give you a brief in, uh, intro of what GeForce Now is and an overview of how it operates. So NVIDIA GeForce Now is a game streaming service that allows users to play games without needing to own powerful gaming machines. And instead, games are rendered in our data centers and streamed directly to users' console devices, such as PC, Mac. And at the heart of the service, we manage a pool of Coover VMs. We run uh, Windows VMs, and they are the workhorses where the actual game rendering happens with our GPUs. We also run Linux VMs for hosting various uh, admin services. For example, uh, we need some services to, uh, to schedule game sessions for clients or for handling various backend processes and manage our user sessions. So ensuring low latency and high availability has always been a very important goal for, uh, for a GFN service. This is because any lag or downtime can significantly cause disruptions in, in the cloud gaming experience. Which, ulti which ultimately leads to user dissatisfactions. Okay. So now we have a general understanding of what NVIDIA GeForce Now is and its architecture. Um, let's take a closer look at, at, um, like at the different types of VM we manage and the type of VM we are talking about for the long-lived TCP connections that we will be discussing for today's um, case study. So as you can see from the diagram, uh, we use Windows virtual machines for running games and Linux VMs that acts, that acts as a reverse proxy between game VMs and clients. And here's how it works. So we refer to these uh, virtual machines for running games called game seats. They live in their own uh, virtual private clouds. And a Linux VM that acts as a reverse proxy, it's used to efficiently transmit the render game data from the game seats to the clients. And each reverse proxy VM has a public network interface and a private one. And it performs NAT from the public interface to the private VPC subnet. So traffic from external sources flow through the public interface and are forwarded to the backend services through the private interface. So these reverse proxy VMs will be today's subject of discussion on rolling deployments with zero downtime failover. And there are two important attributes that are worth mentioning to help us understanding the rolling process in later sections. First is that we maintain a multiple, uh, multiple reverse proxy instances for high availability. And each sharing a symmetrical amount of traffic. Uh, so this redundancy prevents a single point of failure in case one reverse proxy instance goes down, uh, which prevents any, dis any disruptions in the service. Second, each reverse proxy VM has a long-lived TCP connections. Uh, this is because that the connection exists in both, in both front end to the client, as well as back end to our game seats. So managing these persistent connections efficiently, it's very important for delivering a stable connections in our gaming sessions. So now you may ask, why do we have to create this automation to fail over 
instead of simply shut down each uh, reverse proxy instance serially and redeploy them. So let us talk about the challenges in rolling deployments as it was quite a complicated and labor intensive process. So the first challenge was uh, traffic streaming and a single and, and a single reverse proxy instance dependency. So because all streaming traffic for a specific session flows through a single reverse proxy instance, each reverse, each reverse proxy instance is responsible for multiple gaming sessions and any interruption to that, uh, to that reverse proxy instance can immediately cause user impact. Second point is the lengthy draining process for each reverse proxy um, a VM. As each gaming sessions can take up to eight hours, which is how long we have to wait before draining a reverse proxy VM. This is to allow any in-progress sessions to finish naturally before the instance could be taken offline. And lastly, um, there is a complication in orchestrating the automations. Uh, the draining process is a stateful process and requires a complex automation to build and maintain. And the, complex and the complexity increases the chance of errors and requires a significant amount of effort to ensure that the process goes smoothly. So as of these um, challenges, uh, critical security fixes and vulnerability patches could be delayed for several days. So this delay posed a significant risk as it left the entire system vulnerable to attacks while waiting for deployments to complete. Uh, yeah. So let's take a look at the overview of the solution that we implemented to accelerate the process. Uh, the solution leverages two main technologies. One is we use VRRP for minimum downtime. So we create a new standby VM for each targeted failover VM. The standby VM is part of the same VRRP group as the target fail VM. And by being part of the same group, the standby VM is prepared to take over the traffic routing responsibility seamlessly. And this procedure is designed to minimize downtime during the transitions. And we will dive into how it works specifically in the next slide. The other important technology is that we use Kubernetes operators to orchestrate the entire process. Uh, it manages the creation of standby VMs and, and monitor the readiness and coordinates the destruction of the active VM once the standby is ready to take over. And we also have a Kubernetes CR to record all the status of the failover. It acts as a single source of truth for the states of the failover process. And our operator continuously reconciles the CR status to ensure that the failover process um, like progresses smoothly. And if any of the stage fails, the operator will perform retries to address the issue. And throughout the process, the Kubernetes operator updates the status back to the stakeholders. The stakeholders can simply access the failover status through, um, through our custom resource using the Kubernetes native API and build, any, and build any other downstream automation based on the status of the progress. Um, okay. Okay, so to better understand the solution, uh, it's essential to grasp the role of VRRP in this process. So let's explore what that is. So VRRP stands for Virtual Routing Redundancy Protocol. It's a network protocol designed to increase the availability of routing path by automatically assigning available routers in a virtual routing group. So in a nutshell, VRRP enables multiple routers to share the same virtual IP address, ensuring that if one router fails, the others can take its responsibility without interrupting networking services. So let's look at this diagram to see how it works at a high level. So in a VRRP setup, we have multiple routers that are grouped together in a single VRRP group. 
and one router is selected as masters while others are backups. The master router is responsible for routing traffic while the, bug, uh, while the backup mo uh, monitors master's um, uh, liveliness. The routers in a VRD group, they communicate through this uh, heartbeat messages. If the master router fails to send a heartbeat within a specific time period, one of the backup servers is automatically promoted to the master role and taking over the routing responsibility. And in Linux, we configure this VRRP protocol using the keep alive D, uh, daemon. And this protocol offers us three important features. One is the seamless in the transition when the active instance goes down. And the transition should have minimum downtime. User connections should remain uninterrupted providing a stable and continuous connections during the maintenance. So together with uh, multiple replicas of reverse proxy VMs in our clusters, we can achieve high availability of, uh, of reverse proxies in our clusters. Um, okay. So uh, now let's walk through the like the highlights of our long TCP, uh, long live TCP session VM failover process using the GFN's reverse proxy as a study case and see how Kubernetes operators can be used to manage the process uh, for Kubernetes VMs. So the initial step is to, we want to initialize the rolling deployments. So the, so the process begins when the RP um, custom resource, which we manage, is patched by our admins. This action is, is detected by our rollover operator and reconcile, um, and it creates resources that's needed for a standby VM. So this standby VM contains the rollover information provided by the operator, which is attached to it as a cloud in the volume and declared as a Kubernetes secret. And in the second steps, uh, when the standby VM uh, starts, it initiates this keep alive D process in backup mode. So this prepares the standby VM to take over the traffic routing if needed. So once initialized, it advertises the VM instance and updates and, and, and updates the CR status. And once Keep Alive D is configured, the standby VM registers itself with various other uh, with with uh, various other uh, microservices. The operator learns that the standby VM is now running and the Keep Alive D is configured it patched the CR to reflect the latest status update. Uh, the next part is state synchronization between the standby and the, and the active states. The active VM detects the presence of the standby VM and it begins to replicate its internal states onto the standby instance. So in our case, since we are talking about reverse proxy VMs, the Active instance sends its um, like IP table saves, a session to gaming mapping TC rules and other um, and other relevant states to the standby instance through this HTTP post. The standby instance receives the data and recreates its internal states. In our example, this is to ensure that the standby reverse proxy VM is fully prepared to handle the traffic routing seamlessly when it takes over. So after we synchronize all the internal states, we update the CR status again to reflect the latest progress in the rolling deployment. Um, and the next part is the role reversal. So, uh, so the standby instance then increase the priority configurations in the in its uh, keep alive D daemon and restart the keep alive D service. So this action will promote the standby VM to become the new active VM. 
and the previous active VM transition into this standby mode. So this is to ensure that a smooth handover without any disruptions to the ongoing sessions. And of course, we update this CR status again so that people are informed. And we repeat this process for every single active, uh, for every single active instance until all of the VMs are uh, successfully rolled over. The Kubernetes operator then deletes the now standby RPVM, uh, completing the rollover process for that instance. Okay, so that's the end of our, um, our rollover process for a single VM. We repeat this process for every single VM that needs to be rolled over until, until every single VM has successfully rolled over. Yes, so that's so that concludes presentations. So we have explored how we can leverage VRP and Kubernetes operators for states keeping and significantly expedite the process of rolling updates for long lived uh, session Kubernetes VMs. So the new mechanism has helped us significantly to reduce the complexity and the duration of the uh, of rolling updates. So with this approach, the average speed of a rolling deployments was reduced from several business days to hours. Yeah, so that concludes the presentations. Uh, thank you for joining today's TED Talk. We hope that you found the insights valuable and applicable to your projects. Um, let me take a look at the Q&A. Do you, okay, Okay, once the rollover is done, do you create a new standby to keep it ready or to jump offline if? So once the rollover is done, uh, we wait for a one minute so that other GFM microservices can actually pick up the new standby VMs. And then we delete the old active VM. So, so this is to ensure that, you know, in case the uh, rollover didn't happen successfully, we can still switch back to the previous VM. So do GPU VMs newer migrate just style off at the end of the gaming sessions? Lengthy yet finite. Why not have a dedicated per GPU VM reverse proxy that just style off at the end of the gaming sessions? Yeah, so this is a good question because um, because due to the structures of uh, GFN services, we host um, we host this reverse proxy VMs in a different nodes than our GPU VMs. So uh, GPU VMs lay they live on a different nodes. They live on bare metal nodes, but these reverse proxy VMs they are they live on different nodes and they might not be part of the same nodes. So this architecture uh, wouldn't work for us. How is the game state stored when a VM crashed? Is it their own downtime user experience or is it back on VM sort of hot standby? Yeah, so uh, so this, so the use case we are tackling for this rollover process, it's mostly um, targeted towards uh, plan maintenances. So if the active VM crashes all of a sudden, then we don't have any, um, any backup solutions for that. So how many VMs are you guys running in GeForce now trying to understand the scale? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, um, so we are, so our latest scale, we have created up to VMs in the scale of one to 2000 per clusters. And these one to, and one to 2000 VMs are kind of um, mapped to, Three, uh, three, three API servers, and so that's kind of the scale I'm talking about. So it seems that you have essentially implemented a full-blown NIC live migration at the application level. Uh, is this approach expandable to generic VM non-traffic loss migration? Have you seen any Kubernetes pluggable overlay that could do similar things? So I'm not sure if there are existing Kubernetes plugins for uh, for such use cases, but yes, but um, but I think 
the approach that we just introduced that um, that basically uh, ties VRP and Kubernetes operators can be extended for generic use cases. Are you using Kube OVM VPCs or are you leveraging GTP? Yeah, so yeah, this is more specific networking mm -hmm. questions, um, which I'm not um, really an expert of, but I can give you a brief overview of our networking stacks. So the interfaces are managed by a Kubernetes OVM CNI, and each nodes they have a DPU associated with each nodes for managing networking. Could you show the slides before the role reversal? I missed that one. Uh, let me see if I can show the slides before the role reversal. Sorry. The slides before the role reversal talks about state synchronizations between the active VM and the standby VM. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. Thanks, guys. And if there's no questions, yeah, that's it for today's presentation. That was awesome. Thank you, Sheng. Thank you. Um, I, I have a quick question before you go. Um, how can I get someone like you in the community or around my house to answer technical questions in ways that are really easy to understand? Um, oh, um, I'm actually in the Kubernetes Slack channel. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. We'd, we'd love to see you in the uh, Kubert Dev or Virtualization Slack channels. Okay. I will be sure to join that channel as well. Right on. Thank you very much. Uh, the, actually, there is a couple of extra questions, and we do have time if you'd like to uh, take them yeah. on. Uh, let me take a Q&A, I think we have answer. Is the rollover operator proprietary to NVIDIA? I, um, so the implementation actually omits a lot of the specific details that are very specific to our use cases. So here, the presentation, it's a highly simplified um, uh, like version of what we are actually doing. And, and of course, uh, when we spin up the uh, each reverse proxy instance, each reverse proxy VM has to register itself with other uh, GFN specific microservices. So that part I am omitting. And our and our um, reverse uh, uh, like rollover operator actually has a lot of the codes that are specific to our um, use cases. So yeah, I am only disclosing the details that I can disclose. But well, we are not looking to open source this anytime soon. Why do you have to use bare metal nodes for games? Were Kubert GMs sufficient? Um, so, um, so in our bare metal nodes, we actually have a GPU attached to it, and these GPUs are passed through to each VMs for rendering games. If if that answers the viewer questions. Okay, then, then I will stop sharing the slides. That looks like everything. Thank you once again. Unfortunately, you don't get the, um, the giant room of applause on a virtual event. If you do have any more questions, please put them in the virtualization uh, Slack channel in the Kubernetes workspace. And um, perhaps Sheng will join that workspace and he'll be able to answer them if you have them. Wonderful, thank you very much. Okay. We'll be back in approximately five minutes with our next talk.